If you want your game to remain responsive when you're loading another scene, you need to load it in the background so it doesn't interfere with your main thread. Now one great way to do that is to use the resource loader, which has a lot of methods to handle this process for you. Now the typical way of loading things in Godot is by load, which can make your game unresponsive. But by using the load threaded methods, you're gonna control this process much better. Also, you have information about how much of the scene is loaded. Now, because of the way the threads work, you usually wouldn't get a smooth result. And that can make your loading bar look bad. And so using this method, you're gonna make it a little bit more smooth. And it actually gives the player a good feeling about the game. So here you can see my main menu and my loading screen. These are two separate scene files. Now, at the moment, they don't do anything. Now, keep in mind, these are the settings I'm using for my progress bar. Now, you can see I've changed the max to 1 and value to 0. Also, change the step to 0 so it doesn't round your value. And finally, I have a 3D test scene so we can uh, load into this scene. And I needed there to be something in the scene, so I added a bunch of 3D models. And just so it would take a little bit longer to load, I added a huge JPEG file to the scene, but it's off screen so you won't be able to see it. Now, let's start by adding a script to the main menu. I'm going to create a folder for the scripts and create a script for the main menu. Now, once you've done that, we're going to use this button and we're going to connect the signal press to the script we just created and we're going to give it a custom name. So whenever we press this button, this method is going to be executed. Now the typical way of loading another scene would be to just say get tree dot change scene to packed and then you would just use the load and the name of your scene. But as we discussed, this is going to freeze your game. So this is how you want to do it. I'm going to go to my loading scene and create a script for that. And to stay organized, I'm going to save it in the scripts folder. So here we want to reference the progress bar. I'm just going to call it loading bar and I'm going to export it and it's going to be of type progress bar. The next one I'm going to create for my percentage label. You might not have this or you might just want to use the default label that comes with the progress bar. Now let's go ahead and assign these two real quick. And so to start a loading process in the ready method, we're going to go ahead and call the load threaded request. But before that, let's go ahead and create a variable. And this is going to be the scene path that is going to be loaded. Now in the process method, what you want to do is to check if the scene is loaded and get a percentage of how much of it is loaded. And for that, you want to use load threaded get status, which takes your scene path as this first argument. And for the second argument, I'm going to create an array, which is going to contain our percentage information. And let's connect the loading bars value to the progress first index. And you may want to set the percentage label, but make sure to cast it as a string and then multiply it by 100, so it's actually a value from 0 to 100. Since the values from the progress are from 0 to 1. And then finally, when we reach 1, we want to change the scene. And to get the loaded scene, you want to call the load threaded get, and then the scene path. And then let's set the scene path to a default value. And for now, I'm going to hard code this, but later we're going to make sure that we change it using a method. And make sure you're in your loading screen and then press this load current scene. And you can see we have a problem with this percentage, but we'll fix that later. But for the loading bar, you can see it kind of works and we are loaded in our level. Okay, so these are some of the values I'm getting from the load threaded get status. And you can see immediately it jumps from 0 to 0.4 and then stays like that and then jumps to 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 and then 1. So it's not really smooth at all. Now when you turn on use sub threads, it's going to be a little bit faster when loading, but it's going to give you different results. So you can see here that I'm getting a little bit of different results. But for now, we're not going to use these sub threads. So let's go ahead and create a new variable 
this is going to store the latest highest value from the progress array so we're gonna check if the progress first index is higher than update then we're gonna set the update to the progress this way we'll make sure that the update is always higher than its previous value and now let's fix the percentage label by casting this to an int before casting it to a string. And now if you play this, you can see that the loading bar is more stable and the percentage label is actually an int. Now the first improvement we're gonna add to this is we're gonna increment it by delta multiplied by some small value like 0.5 if the loading bar's value is less than update. And there you go, that's your first improvement, but it still looks stuck. And so here I'm actually going to use the lerp method to lerp between the current value of the loading bar and update using delta. And now you can see that's made it already so much more smooth. Now, another improvement we can add is to increment this uh, loading bar no matter what, even if we're stuck. Now, keep that in mind, this will make the loading bar inaccurate, but it will make it more smooth. Also, we don't want the loading bar go to 100% before the scene is loaded. So we wanna multiply it by this statement here, but I actually am going to change this to 0.9 minus the current value of the loading bar. Now this is going to add to the loading bar very very slowly until we get a new information but it will never pass the 90% point because the last thing you want to do is to lie to the user. Now you actually need to clamp this between 0 and 1 so we always stay positive otherwise it might subtract from the loading bar. Now to be able to see this line better I'm going to bring it to the second line but as you can see it's going to give us an error. And so I'm actually going to add a backslash before the line so it knows that the rest of the statement is on the second line. And now you can see the overall smoothness has improved greatly. But what you might notice is that it never fully reaches 100% and it kind of gets stuck at the end. And to fix that we're going to use a ternary operator which is going to give us a fixed value something like 0.5 if the update is at 1 or higher, otherwise we're just going to return the default value. If the scene is not loaded, then we're going to use this statement here to increment the loading value. Now just to double check, let's make sure the update is also at 1 and then we're going to load to our scene. Later we're going to use a better method to check if the scene is loaded, but for now this should work. And there you go, we can see that once the loading bar is at 100%, we are loaded into our scene. Now I'm actually going to grab this code and paste it above where we check for the loading bar's value so we can actually see the number 100 when we are loading. It's something really small, but I'm one of those people where I just want to see the number 100 before I load into the scene. Okay, so at the moment you can see we have the scene name hard-coded and so we want to be able to go to the loading screen from the main menu. Now for that I'm going to create a new script. I'm just going to call this something real common like loader. You might want to be more specific though. Now you can see this script is inheriting from node but it is not connected to any node. So how is it going to be ran? Well we're going to auto load this which can make it act like a singleton, which you can think of it as a global variable that you can access from any scene in your game. Now to add a singleton or an autoload, you want to go to your project settings and in the autoload tab, you want to locate your script and then give it a name. I'm just going to call this loader and I'm going to press add. Now let's create a variable for the scene path that we're going to be loading into. And for now it's going to be empty. Next I'm going to create a new method called change level and it's going to take a argument and that is going to be the path that we're going to be changing into. And another variable for the path of the loading screen that I'm just going to hard code because I'm not going to change this later. And actually let's load it. 
and in the change level method let's actually change to our loading screen and before we do that we need to set the scene path to the path now this is the script for my main menu and in the start game method I'm gonna call our change level method with the path as the level that you want to load into which is going to be level one for me now back to the script of our loading screen let's set the scene path to the loader.scene path which is going to contain the path of the scene that we want to load into and now the moment of truth you can see when i press the play button we get into the loading screen and after a while we get loaded into our level one now to make all of this more exciting, I'm going to create a new variable and call it previous scene. This is simply going to contain our last scene that we were on. And let's go ahead and create a new method. I'm going to call this go to previous. And we're going to use this variable we just created to switch the, to the previous scene that we were on. But first let's make sure that previous scene is not an empty string. And if it's not an empty string, then what we want to do is to set the scene path to the previous scene and then change level into that scene. Obviously, we want the loading screen to do that, so we're going to change to the loading screen. And we want to set the previous scene in the change level method. And I'm going to get the current levels path by get tree the current scene and then scene file path. Now to test this, in my level 1 scene, I'm going to create a new script and I'm going to wait for some seconds and then we want to go back to our previous scene using the method that we just created. And now you can see, once we are loaded in our scene, we're going to wait for 3 seconds and then we should get back to our main menu. So there you go. Now you might have noticed that on our way back to the main menu, it was kind of slow, which it shouldn't have been. So to fix that, I'm going to change this value to something a little bit larger, like 3. And let's give it a shot. Okay, so now we're going to wait. And there you go. So depending on your game and your preferences, you might want to play around with this a little bit to get what you want. Okay, so here I'm going to do a little bit of error handling. I'm simply going to store the return value of get status into the variable result and I'm going to check if result is equal to uh, thread load failed. So if the loading has failed, we're going to go back to our previous scene. Let's say for example, if you attempted to go to a scene that didn't exist, then it's not going to go to that scene and it's going to go back to the main menu as you can see. And then finally, let's replace the update with something better. Like, let's check if the result is equal to the resource loader dot thread load loaded. And that's the end of another tutorial. Thank you so much for sticking till the end. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already. I mean, what are you doing, man? Anyways, I'll see you guys soon.